Signs and flowers now surrounding UVA's campus as Virginia tries to come to terms with the latest mass shooting in America. Three young men, students and football players, gunned down on their way back from a field trip. Bullets piercing the window of the bus they used to catch a play in D.C., never giving them the chance to make it back to family and friends. That suspected gunman arrested in Henrico after a nearly 12-hour manhunt just feet away from a family member's home. We have team coverage for you live at 5 as our team spends the day with the people left with questions, anger, and grief. NBC 12 Live at 5 starts with local breaking news. And of course, that local breaking news out of Charlottesville where three football players were shot and killed, two others also injured. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Kurt Autry. Thanks for joining us live at 5. And good evening, everyone. I'm Makia Turner at the Rotunda on UVA grounds tonight. And in just about two hours, the South Lawn on the other side of this Rotunda will fill with students and the community in mourning tonight over this tragedy, a vigil planned for 7 o'clock. But let me tell you, just feet away from where I'm standing is a frat row, and banners and signs are popping up all throughout this block with one simple message, Virginia is strong. Several students today telling me that the campus feels empty. It feels broken. But one thing for sure, they say if they stick together, they know that they will get through this. And that uh, feeling is certainly shared throughout this campus tonight. Now, as promised, we do have team coverage. We have crews all throughout the university. And we do want to start with Henry Graff, who explains how the arrest unfolded uh, when it comes to this suspect, as well as what he's been able to learn from police. Henry? Nikia, good evening to you. Yeah, the scene here now cleared by Culper Theater, where police have this area shut down for a majority of the day and overnight. I'll step out of the way here, too. A growing memorial also happening here near the garage where the shooting took place. And within the past half hour, a drama teacher at a private school showing up here and posting that note over there on the stop sign there. And that note just talking about how devastated they are by this loss here in the UVA community. UVA's president, police chief, both visibly shaken by what unfolded here last night, but a major break in that case came live during a news conference. Pardon me. Thank you, Captain. We just received information the suspect is in custody. That moment, a sigh of relief for police, the university, and the community worried a gunman was still on the loose. University police saying they got the call at about 10:16 last night for shots fired in the Culbert Theater parking area. The university saying students were returning from a field trip, seeing a play in Washington, D.C., when the suspect apparently opened fire on the bus. Police say fellow UVA student Chris Darnell Jones Jr. is the shooter and is now charged with three counts of second-degree murder, among others. 25 people were on that bus at the time, and police say Jones shot a total of five students. Three died. Two are being treated at a hospital. Although we do not yet have a full understanding of the motive and circumstances surrounding these events, police are investigating. When I see our students, I see my own kids. And I cannot imagine anything worse for a parent than to lose a child. The suspect, Jones, was known to both the university and police. In September of this year, a third party told a multidisciplinary threat assessment team that Jones had made a comment about having a gun. Police say they were never able to speak with Jones back out here live. Now, where again, the memorial here behind me continues to grow here at this hour. Police also telling us that the suspect, Jones, had a prior criminal incident from February of 2021 over a concealed weapon violation, and that was never reported to the University of Virginia, as police say it should have. We will keep you posted on that. For now, we are live at 5 here at the University of Virginia. I'm Henry Graff, NBC 12 News. All right. Thank you so much, Henry. Certainly heartbreaking news today. And of course, at the center of this tragedy, three young men, three football players. We do want to pull their pictures up on the screen from you, for you now. Three lives taken by this senseless act of violence. Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry, all beloved UVA football players. Two others were also injured. One of them is still in critical condition tonight. Now, Live at 5, our team coverage continues with Riley Wyant, who spoke with a distraught teammate today. And Riley, I know this is just all so hard to process. 
Makia, this has been an extremely heavy day here at the University of Virginia, especially for those closest to the victims. I'm told there was an extremely emotional team meeting earlier today. And now, since then, family members and friends and teammates have all been remembering and talking about how amazing these young men were. Deshaun Perry was a junior linebacker from Miami, Florida. His teammates describe him on social media as a gentle giant, the embodiment of resilience and perseverance. A representative of the family told NBC 12 his parents do not wish to speak publicly about the incident right now as their grief is only beginning. Lavelle Davis Jr., otherwise known as Tyler or Vell, was also a junior. He was a star wide receiver from Ridgeville, South Carolina. He is described as someone who fiercely loved his family and friends. His passion for the game of football ran deep. Many saying he had a shot of going to the NFL draft following the season. Devin Chandler is also a junior wide receiver. He transferred to UVA from the University of Wisconsin last year. He is from Virginia Beach. Friends today saying they can't believe someone so full of life is gone. He was an unbelievably nice person, I'm told, and always had a huge smile on his face. I spoke with Aaron Famui, a teammate of theirs who is taking it all in at the scene of the crime. He was at a loss for words. Man, it's just heartbreaking. I see three young boys. Had a whole future ahead of them. Just to see them gone. This is just heartbreaking. Two other players were injured. One of them is in critical condition. The other, I'm told, is stable. According to our sister station, WAFB, one of those injured players is running back Mike Hollins from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. We have no word on his condition, but several players and fans have posted on social media praying for him to pull through. Now, we just heard a statement from both athletic director Carla Williams and head coach Tony Elliott saying how devastated they are, but still no word on whether UVA will have a football season. Ahead at 6, I have reaction from a professor that taught both Lavelle Davis and Devin Chandler. Live at 5, Riley Wyant, NBC 12 News. All right, thank you so much, Riley. And that suspect, Christopher Jones Jr., 22-year-old, whose birthday would have been this weekend, was arrested and taken into custody late this afternoon. Uh, we do know that he has ties to the Richmond area. He grew up in Henrico and Petersburg. And with more information on his background tonight, we do want to check in with A.J. Nwoko. We know that uh, Christopher was arrested not far from his family's home in Henrico. A.J.? That's right, Nakia. The former football player was arrested right here on the intersection of Acton Street and Edgelon Street here in eastern Henrico. That's less than a five-minute drive away from his mother's home, but it's unclear at this time if he was actually trying to make his way back to his family. Now, while I spoke with his mother earlier this morning, around 10 in the morning, uh, U.S. Marshals swarmed his mother's home trying to look for the 22-year-old. His mother was sobbing when I spoke with her, still trying to make sense of the accusations against her son, especially because she says there were no warning signs. She told me she spoke with him yesterday about how excited he was to celebrate his birthday later this month. His father, Christopher Darnell Jones Sr., says his son was liked by everyone and excelled in school at Petersburg High School as well as in college. He admits that he was... Uh, he, he knew something was up the last time they spoke. He had some problems. Uh, when the last time I talked to him, he said uh, some people was picking on him or whatever. Uh, he didn't know how to handle it. I just told him, no, just do, go to school. Don't pay him no mind. Do what you got to do. He was, he was real paranoid when I, when I talked to him about something. He wouldn't tell me everything. I don't know what happened between then and now to cause, to cause this uh, to happen. Now, the former football player is currently in police custody and facing second-degree murder charges. Now, Jones is currently being held in Henrico Jail. He has a video arraignment scheduled for next Tuesday for the charges he's facing in Charlottesville. We'll keep you up to date on everything else we continue to learn about this heartbreaking situation. That'll do it for us now, live at 5 in eastern Henrico. AJ Nwoko, NBC 12.
All right, thank you, AJ. So, so many families, so many lives uh, touched by this tragedy tonight. And as we mentioned, classes across campus were canceled today. Businesses all throughout the area were also closed due to that shelter in place that was lifted late this afternoon after nearly 12 hours. And joining me tonight is Macy Morris. Macy, you've been out here with me all evening. Uh, we've seen students just taking their time to just cope and reflect and heal and just grieve uh, all of what's going on. And so for everyone in it, able to uh, feel out here. Yeah, it's definitely been a tragic 24 hours for everyone involved. And really, it was a ghost town here on the UVA corner this morning. Most, if not all, businesses were lights off and doors locked. Now, walking along the corner earlier today, I spoke with students who say they're extremely saddened by this news. Second year, Anna Gerard says it was a normal Sunday night. Her and her group of friends were studying at the Gerard Hotel, Graduate Hotel, excuse me, when they began receiving text alerts about the shooting. Gerard says her and her peers are still coming to terms with all that unfolded. I don't know how to feel. It feels not real still. So um, I think we all just need like a few days to like kind of process things. I think we owe that to the um, people that died. Gerard says her and her friends were too scared to walk back to their dorms that they wound up buying a hotel room at the graduate. And earlier today, I spoke with the hotel's general manager who says dozens of students wind up buying rooms that night. I'll have those details on your side at 6, but McKee, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Just truly devastating news. Truly heartbreaking. Thank you so much, Macy. Now, first at four, we did tell you about Governor Youngkin's response, but tonight we are hearing from the White House. We do have a statement in uh, from President Biden. Uh, this is what they're saying tonight. The President and the First Lady are mourning the University of Virginia after yet another deadly shooting in America that's taken the lives of three young people. stay with NBC 12 all throughout the evening as we bring you complete team coverage of this tragedy. Again, as mentioned, in about two hours on the other side of the rotunda here on the South Lawn, we do know a vigil will take place uh, in remembrance of these three beloved students. But for now, that is the very latest out of Charlottesville on UVA's campus. Nikia Turner, Kurt, I'm going to send things back to you. All right, absolutely gut-wrenching. We'll see you again at 6, Makia. Thank you. Turning now to the first alert forecast with a live look from South Richmond. While there was plenty of sunshine today, town right chilly to start the work week. Let's get right over to meteorologist Megan Wise with a closer look at tonight's conditions. Megan? Hey, Kurt, it is going to be a chilly, if not cold, evening ahead of us. So make sure if you do have some plans for running some errands, have that heavier coat with you. This is going to be all week long and into the weekend with temperatures below average. We've got some cold mornings ahead of us and temperatures currently right now low to mid 40s. We have quiet conditions on first alert Doppler radar. We will start to see an increase in cloud cover, especially overnight and as we go into the morning tomorrow, but staying dry and just turning colder next five hours here on the NBC 12 weather app. Eight o'clock, we're going to be close to 40 degrees. We'll see some neighborhoods in the upper 30s by about nine this evening and 10 o'clock we're in the mid 30s. We'll talk more though. We have rain in the forecast tomorrow and I'll show you the latest hour by hour here in just a few minutes. Kurt. Okay, thank you. Live at 5, we have an update now about a shooting at a Chesterfield cookout restaurant. We showed you this video of the shooting last month. You can see the suspect fire a gun in the drive through window at the cookout on Midlothian Turnpike. This happened back on July 31st. Police say a woman working inside was, in fact, shot. Her injuries were minor. We're told she's okay. 23-year-old Jose Hernandez is now in custody in connection to the shooting, police arrested him Tuesday. He's facing several firearms charges and is being held without bond. In just under an hour from now, Richmond city leaders will talk concerns over high property taxes. It was just last week, Richmond Mayor LeVar Stoney introduced the Five Back Initiative, which would lower the current tax rate by five cents. Now, that means those who pay their 2022 real estate taxes would receive a rebate check at the start of next year, a one-time deal. City Council is also set to look at several other proposals at tonight's council meeting, which starts at 6 o'clock. Live at 5, Election Day may be over, but its impacts yet to be felt. Chesterfield and Henrico voters both say yes to bond referendums. Coming up, we'll take a look at what's next and how that money will be spent.